Welcome back to Madman Review. In this video, we'll talk about an incident that happened some months ago where an off-duty female cop successfully defended herself against a man who tried to steal her open carry handgun for self-defense. On January 17, in woke anti-two-way Chicago, an off-duty female police officer shot and killed a man who attempted to attack her and steal her gun, despite her repeated warnings, including I'll kill you. The officer is a member of the city's police force, while the suspect, Levon Smith, was 39 years old and died three days after being shot three times in the stomach. Initially, the officer attempted to intervene in a dispute involving Smith and three other individuals outside of an apartment complex in the notoriously violent south side of the city. Video evidence captured the officer and Smith conversing for a brief period after the three individuals had left. As soon as the officer turns her back, Smith makes an attempt to seize her gun. She can be heard a few times shouting, I'll kill you. They engage in a physical struggle, ending up wrestling on the ground with her shoes slipping off. Two gunshots are audible, after which Smith utters, You got me, you got me. While yelling for neighbors to dial 911, the officer hollers at Smith, I told your dumbass I'd kill you, before discharging a third and final shot. Eventually, she contacts 911 herself, telling the dispatcher, Oh my god, he just tried to rob me. He just tried to steal my off-duty gun. The officer identifies herself as a cop and informs the dispatcher that she had been attempting to call her superiors, but her calls were unanswered. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, the officer has been on the job since 2022. Another officer arrives on the scene before an ambulance, and the shooter is questioned about the location of her shots. I don't know, she replies, adding, F it, I can't believe this happened to me. The arrest report refers to the events leading up to the shooting as a verbal argument and accuses Smith of attempting to disarm her. As a result of the shooting, the officer was put on administrative leave for 30 days and treated for a laceration above her right eye. According to a tactical report on the incident, the officer was in imminent danger when Smith attempted to take her firearm. She has not been charged with any criminal offenses in a 911 call regarding the original argument, which was released by the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. A voice is heard saying, Just give me my bag back, bro. A neighbor reported to 911 about the shooting, quote, There's a lady outside with a gun and she shot somebody. She's going inside with a gun. A neighbor who witnessed the shooting said, quote, The tussle that they had almost had me in tears because she's a tiny little person. I'm glad that she was able to keep herself together and do what she needed to do to come out alive. Therefore, the officer and the city are facing a $10 million lawsuit filed by Smith's family, who claim that his estate was, quote, diminished due to funeral expenses. According to the lawsuit, Smith's family suffered damages due to his death, including loss of companionship and society, grief, sorrow, and mental anguish. The lawsuit accuses the officer of using excessive and violent physical force and claims that she should have known that such force was unnecessary given the circumstances. Smith had previously been charged with aggravated battery and attempted robbery before his death, and he was pronounced dead at Christ Medical Center in Oakland. So, let us now talk about the important takeaways from this video. A firearm is the greatest equalizer. Had she not been armed, the outcome in the video would have been significantly different if he had assaulted her in the same manner. Regardless of what some feminist may suggest, it is a well-established incontestable fact that we, men, not soy boys, but true red-blooded men, are physically larger and stronger than women, making firearms the only means to level the playing field when a woman is confronted with a stronger and larger male attacker. The firearm is the equalizer for many reasons, but one of the most significant is its ability to level the playing field between individuals of differing physical abilities. In a world where physical strength and size have traditionally been important factors in determining one's ability to protect oneself, the firearm has emerged as a powerful tool that can give anyone a chance to defend themselves effectively. The term equalizer is often used to describe firearms because unlike other weapons, they have the ability to provide individuals with a level of protection that is not tied to their physical prowess. A firearm can give someone the ability to defend themselves against an attacker who may be much larger or stronger than them, allowing them to level the playing field and increase their chances of survival. In addition to providing a level of protection, firearms can also serve as a deterrent to potential attackers, knowing that someone is armed with a firearm that can make a would-be attacker think twice about targeting them, especially if they believe that their intended victim may have the ability to defend themselves effectively. The equalizing power of firearms is perhaps best illustrated in cases where women have used them to defend themselves against male attackers. In many instances, women who have been trained in the use of firearms have been able to successfully fend off attackers who were much larger and stronger than them, often with little or no physical injury to themselves. Always keep around in the chamber. While it's not exactly a bad thing for some individuals to prefer carrying guns without a round in the chamber, it's important to understand the limitations and disadvantages of doing so. 
In the particular video, the off-duty lady cop only had one hand to grab her gun and fire the initial shot, which greatly demoralized the dude who pounced at her. Without a round in the chamber, the guy would have likely disarmed her, and again, the outcome in the video would have been significantly different. As a concealed carry handgun carrier, upon purchasing our handgun, we will need to decide whether to keep a round in the chamber or not. The answer depends on various factors, such as the intended use of the firearm, its purpose, and our level of training. While there are pros and cons to both options, experts suggest some points to consider. Emptying the chamber can reduce the risk of accidental discharge, which is a significant advantage, but if you need to use the gun for self-defense, having a round chamber can literally save your life. Also, keeping a round in the chamber can make you more cautious and mindful of gun safety practices, which is another plus. It's crucial to train and practice regardless of your decision, especially if you choose to carry without a round in the chamber. If you're not used to racking the slide to load a round, it may take longer to draw your gun in a tense situation, potentially putting you in danger. Get some type of concealed carry insurance. This is relevant, because although the woman wasn't criminally charged, the family of the man she shot and killed sued her for an absurd amount of $10 million in civil court. It is disturbing that in today's society, we can use a firearm in self-defense, but the family of the attacker may pursue legal actions against us that could result in our financial ruin. We may outlive our attacker, but we may still face the burden of a civil lawsuit. Therefore, it's important to have some form of concealed carry insurance to protect yourself against such circumstances. Although the legal principles surrounding self-defense may appear to be straightforward, such as determining whether the individual had a legal right to be present, whether their actions warranted the use of lethal force, and if they had a rational belief that their life was under immediate threat, the truth is that it's far more complicated. This lady's $10 million lawsuit serves as a clear indication of the significance of having access to legal resources and representation in case of a self-defense scenario. Without adequate legal guidance, individuals may face a considerable disadvantage that can have a significant impact on their life. To avoid the substantial expenses of navigating the legal system without support, it's essential to contemplate obtaining self-defense insurance or legal representation. It may seem like an unnecessary cost, but you have car insurance, which, if you think about it, is no different. The potential costs of not having such an insurance could be far more significant. The goal is to allow you and me to defend ourselves without the concern of facing legal consequences while also promoting public safety and responsible gun ownership. If you're looking for self-defense insurance, some companies to consider include United States Concealed Carry Association or USCCA, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network or ACLDN, and US Law Shield, among others. But there are many more self-defense insurance providers out there that you can choose from. In case you're wondering, we were not sponsored by anyone to promote their self-defense insurance products, so we don't have any particular recommendations as far as which of them you should go for. But it doesn't matter which company you choose, what matters is you have self-defense insurance. If you're interested, we can do a video on the subject, like maybe the top 5 best bang for the buck self-defense insurance providers. You can let us know in the comments. You should never open carry. I don't have a problem with people open carrying, but it does come with some risk. One of those being everyone knows you have a gun on you, including all of the criminals. This guy clearly knew she had a gun on her, and he went for it. The same thing can happen to you when you open carry. Criminals aren't always the brightest people in the world, and they tend to act on impulse. At the end of the day, this guy messed around and paid the ultimate price. I love the way this off-duty lady cop handled herself, and I pray she gets all the support she needs going forward. So. Why shouldn't you open carry? Open carry is not a suitable practice for ordinary private citizens for a lot of reasons. While it's true that police officers open carry their firearms while on duty, it's important to note that your everyday carry gun is not a police officer's on-duty gun. Here are four reasons why you should reconsider open carry. 1. Contrary to what you may think, it will not deter crime. It's crucial to acknowledge that displaying your firearm through open carry is not enough to scare off real criminals. Your everyday carry handgun won't deter the most dangerous individuals who aren't afraid of guns. Without emphasizing retention during training, open carry only gives criminals more time to strategize an attack. Number 2. You're just telling criminals to pounce at you. If someone with malicious intentions can see your firearm, they'll have an opportunity to devise a plan. Their strategy will involve stealing your gun and using it against you or other people. Keeping your gun in an exposed holster is an invitation for it to be stolen. Number 3. It will only scare good people. It's unlikely that we can persuade those who are against guns to support them. Although you may want to display your firearm to assert that you possess a gun and don't care if it upsets non-gun owners, you could be unintentionally intimidating people who have no idea what you're up to. Number 4. 
Masad Ayyub's advice. Masad Ayyub, a renowned firearms instructor, author, and expert witness in firearms cases, said in one of his videos, quote, Concealed carry provides the criminal the maximum possibility to make a fatal error in the victim selection process. When you open carry, the criminal gets to choose the time and place of their assault. You're already one step behind. But carrying a concealed handgun gives you a tactical advantage. You know how when you see a magician pull a rabbit out of his hat for the first time, it just leaves you dumbfounded? Drawing your concealed carry handgun has the same effect on criminals. There are times you won't even have to shoot. Individual empowerment is often discussed by social justice warriors in this country, but they're all anti-gun libturds, so they don't discuss it when it comes to self-defense. Nonetheless, having the most potent tool to safeguard yourself and your family is incredibly empowering. For this reason, please help us here at Madman Review to spread this message by liking this video and sharing it with everyone you know. Don't forget to subscribe and comment to help with YouTube's anti-gun algorithms. Oh, and click on that little bell icon too while you're at it, so you don't miss out on new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.